message. I'm here on my own account. Snape was wringing his hands. He looked a little mad, with his straggling black hair flying around him. I... I come with a warning. No, a request, please. The prophecy. The prediction. Trelawney. Ah, yes, said Dumbledore. How much did you relay to Lord Voldemort? Everything. Everything I heard, said Snape. Will you give me in return, Severus? In? In return? Snape gaped at Dumbledore, and Harry expected him to protest. But after a long moment, he said, Anything. The hilltop faded, and Harry stood in Dumbledore's office, and something was making a terrible sound, like a wounded animal. Snape was slumped forward in a chair, and Dumbledore was standing over him, looking grim. After a moment or two, Snape raised his face, and he looked like a man who had lived a hundred years of misery since leaving the wild hilltop. I thought you were going to keep her safe. She and James put their faith in the wrong person, said Dumbledore. Rather like you, Severus. Weren't you hoping that Lord Voldemort would spare her? Snape's breathing was shallow. Her boy survives, said Dumbledore. With a tiny jerk of the head, Snape seemed to flick off an irksome fly. Her son lives. He has her eyes. Precisely her eyes. Do you remember the shape and color of Lily Evans's eyes, I am sure? Don't! bellowed Snape. Gone. Dead. Is this remorse, Severus? I wish. I wish I were dead. And what use would that be to anyone? said Dumbledore coldly. If you loved Lily Evans, if you truly loved her, then your way forward is clear. Snape seemed to peer through a haze of pain, and Dumbledore's words appeared to take a long time to reach him. What? What do you mean? You know how and why she died. Make sure it was not in vain. Help me protect Lily's son. <laughs> the small boy from the cupboard. You must obey every command I give you. I think, said Dumbledore, that if you choose to return, there is a chance he may be finished for good. I cannot promise it, but I know this, Harry, that you have less to fear from returning here than he does. Harry glanced again at the raw-looking thing that trembled and choked in the shadow beneath the distant chair. Do not pity the dead, Harry. Pity the living, and above all, those who live 
without love. By returning, you may ensure that fewer souls are maimed, fewer families are torn apart. If that seems to you a worthy goal, then we say goodbye for the present.